So I painted a great number of people in the Bangkok night. Uh, there's so many faces, there's so many different kinds of people that it, there's some infinite supply of paint. This particular girl, uh, I've painted uh, five or six paintings of, and I, I find her a very interesting girl. She, unlike 99% of the Thai females that go into the nightlife and, and work there for a while, she has somehow managed not to be uh, damaged and destroyed by it. And more or less has come out uh, in a sense as a winner, kind of like Spartacus going through the gladiator system. She's almost 40 years old. She's been working in the nightlife for 20 years. There's a son who's 21 who she's put through university. Uh, and I got to know her more and more and I found out that uh, she's economically very successful in the nightlife business. She makes well over 100,000 baht a month, month after month. She's bought businesses and houses for her parents. Uh, she owns a condo, she has a car. Uh, she uh, goes to yoga in the afternoon before she goes to work at the bar to balance herself because physically it's quite a demanding job. Uh, she takes care of her health. She, her diet's a kind of a, a nutrition intense diet. Uh, she goes to Buddhist uh, retreats once every month or two months for three days to, to clean out her psychological state. And she's kind of like a pro athlete in the Bangkok night. Uh, very disciplined, very successful, quite good looking, striking, really kind of a striking look stylish. Most of her uh, clients are, are kind of regular clients. They tend to be uh, guys who have been in Asia a long time, who have good jobs. They tend to dress well. They tend to be pretty good looking, good shape physically. Uh, she, she will uh, avoid or reject any client she's not happy with or doesn't like. Uh, and she'll have clients who might see her uh, four or five times a month. They either come through Bangkok or they come in and out of Bangkok or might have a condo here or be based here. And they basically treat her like a, a, a kind of girlfriend, mistress, second wife. You know, they might have been married and divorced and had kids already. They don't want to get married again. Uh, they go out with her to have dinner, go to a music place. Maybe they don't have sex, maybe they do have sex. Uh, they, it's kind of like not that different than a mature relationship in London, Paris, New York, LA. Only she's getting money. Well, this guy, to me, is, is kind of a, is a humor. He's an American politician from Southern California who, who sees himself as a city father who's just itching to get the Humanitarian of the Year Award in Beverly Hills and uh, wants to be seen as a good man who's good to his children, good to his wife, uh, and decent. Well, in actual fact, he's not. Uh, I imagined him in Bangkok at an international conference and he's staying in a nice five-star hotel like the Hyatt Erewhon, and everything's uh, according to his public script. That he's just this nice guy. And then suddenly about 11 o'clock at night, he wanders out of his five-star hotel into the Bangkok night for the first time in his life. And he kind of takes a, a right turn at the Plon Chit and ends up on Soy 4, Soy 3, Nana. And uh, things start to happen. And uh, so he's kind of like, he's just out of the Bangkok night for the very first time. And you kind of know by looking at him that uh, he has vulnerabilities and deficits and bad things might, might happen. <laughs> I think most people have, have different facets inside them. And some people deal with those facets constructively, uh, and other people uh, get taken over by different facets inside them. I don't think anybody in this world is completely 100% decent and nice. I think every human being is descended from reptiles, bugs, dinosaurs, amoeba, bacteria. And every once in a while, the DNA is calling, and saying, oh, I need, I need some mud. I need something really dirty and nasty. Take me, you know. <laughs> and so they, they go off to 
you know, wander around Pat Pong or Las Vegas or some bad part of New York City or London or Hamburg, Germany, and their primitive DNA gets this little vitamin boost. So this is supposed to be one of the small bars in Soy Cowboy, not one of the really hot, successful bars with thousands of customers. And uh, what I was trying to do was uh, make a sort of ironic statement about the difference between the illusion of desire and the illusion of excitement and the actual reality. And so the bar, the designer of the bar, the owner of the bar, has gone to great lengths to create this idea of something that's really exciting. It's called Sexy Bar. And this sexy, sexy, sexy. And this is Dundee, which I guess is Thai for sex somehow. And, uh, and the lighting is kind of there, and it's all kind of like supposed to get everybody revved up and, you know, ready to go. But as you can see, nothing's happening. It's like a slow night. You know, there's not a lot of tourists. Everyone here is obviously from Bangkok because they're just kind of hanging out. They're not sort of out for their one night of their lifetime in Bangkok. These three guys are just talking to each other, probably about football. This lady boy just kind of wandering around, hopelessly looking for a customer, but not much energy. This girl is hustling a lady drink, which at most is 50 baht, so it's hardly worth her time. And this guy obviously doesn't care, he's not excited, he's not interested, it probably isn't even gonna buy the lady drink. She's watching her friend hustle the guy, saying to herself, why are you bothering? And this girl's just staring off into space, worried about her two kids and her mom and dad back in Isan. Well, uh, I often uh, give copies of my paintings to some of the uh, girls and people who work in the bars and the nightlife. And uh, even though the painting might be very distorted and the color is kind of strange, they, they, uh, they seem to have a, a, a great deal of appreciation for the paintings and for what I'm doing. And a, a lot of them have seen the book. And I think what they see in what I'm doing is that I'm giving voice and expression to their lives as workers in nightlife. And uh, I'm showing respect for what their job actually is and that it's actually a job and that nightlife is actually a business and that they have a struggle every day they come to work and they have a goal and reason why they're there. And my paintings, I think, show respect to the workers of nightlife uh, as individual people who are dealing with the cards that they have been dealt with and trying their best to find some way to a better life for themselves and their children and their families.